Hello. Yep. Um. Hi. So I wear glasses once again. It's about time. Suddenly the world around me is in HD and it's magical. So welcome to the art area. This is where I paint out my feelings, converse with the internet. This is where I write all my cover letters and where I struggle to edit videos. If you might not have noticed, I'm not in a particularly great mood. <laughs> Ooh, the oven's turned off. Yes. I've had a bad day. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna sit and explain why. But yeah, a bad day. But it's one of many bad days that are sort of all connected together, which is why my head is in a conundrum because I can't seem to fix the stuff that's making me unhappy. I think right now in my life, there are several huge, big problems, some of which are so big that I don't know how to tackle, and because I can't tackle them or succeed in defeating them or controlling them, perhaps, I can't move forwards. So, what are they? <laughs> I think one of which is health. Physically, I'm on the up, primarily because I'm nearly two stone heavier than I was four years ago. Putting on weight itself is not a cure, but it definitely helps. The same as being overweight could also enhance my problems. Being underweight definitely made it worse. And I was not aware at the time. So that's good that things are a bit better. It's still a hindrance in its own right though. I mean, I'm still stressing as to whether to take my walking stick out with me when I leave the house sometimes, <laughs> or I need it and I don't have it with me. Whereas two years ago, I knew my limit. I knew if I got to 7,000 steps, then I would be limping the rest of the day. Now, sometimes I'm fine for weeks at a time and then it hits out of the blue. And of course I'm not prepared. So at the moment, I don't know whether or not I can do things, I can't do things. Sometimes I can walk 20,000 steps in one day and be fine. Other days I can walk 3,000 steps and then it kicks in. It's just the type of activity. Ah. Let's not get too bogged down in that, shall we? <laughs> My point is, it's unpredictable, it's limiting, Hmm. The next is the mental health, and this I struggle so much to even verbalise. And it's not from shame. I know the last few years people have said that I am contributing to the stigma against mental health because I myself have stopped talking, to the extent that I was when I was a child, essentially, and no. Um, I think you could say stigma's got to me. It was so much easier and safer for me to open up when I was a kid when I was a tween, when I was a teenager, when I was a student, when I was self-employed, when I was heavily dependent and sustainable within my own self-employment. Um, nowadays, not so much. To be completely frank, me being open about my mental health has cost me opportunities in my more recent adult life. Me being open about my mental health whilst I am Struggling on the employment front is a career killer. I know we're in 2020, but there is still so much discrimination in society as well as the workplace in regards to health issues, be them physical or mental. And I, I, see, I'm just, it's like, I mean, it's also one of the reasons why I shut up last year because I went to an interview whereby the people went down my social media in front of me in the interview. I mean, it's happened a couple of times, but all of a sudden some of these like really sad posts were there with people either side of me. It occurred to me that despite all the good I've done across my lifetime, my online lifetime as well, my online content from like even a decade or more ago was potentially negatively impacting my applications, and my future. It felt like it was hindering any progress. I've been struggling for some time now whereby past videos and posts and photos from when I was really, really ill, like suicidal, end of the world ill, keep being brought up like I wrote them yesterday. I'm shaking already. I have taken tons of stuff down now, but when you post to the internet, it's forever. I no longer relate 
to the person in my, my original videos. Sometimes she annoys me, she upsets me, she frustrates me, um, in addition to being cringy half the time. Um, I've progressed so much further than my 12-year-old self. Um, my suicidal 17-year-old self does not exist anymore. And <laughs> I have entirely different perceptions on the world to her. And yet, because she even exists and has been documented, it's hard to avoid. So I don't want to erase my past, but it's difficult to sort of say, hey, 17-year-old Rebecca was 10 years ago. That's not 20, 20, 20, Rebecca. I'm 27 now. I have more history. I have more experience. The next thing, let's move on completely entirely to the next thing. The next thing is kids. Do I want kids? Do I feel capable of physically having kids? That's another story. Um, does James want kids? Because it's not just a singular decision. Um, are we ready to be parents when we can't even look after ourselves? I mean, at this point in my parents' life, they've been married two years. Um, every life is completely different. But I am comparing myself to my parents. I mean, my parents got married in the 80s. It was an entirely different world. But for me as a woman, having kids is a massive thing. In terms of employment, in terms of the financial aspect of supporting us. And then there's the whole panic of wanting to find long-term employment before getting pregnant. So the, the chances of things being more long-term. In some of the jobs I'm in right now, if I was to get pregnant, I would have no support whatsoever. I mean, nobody told me about this when I was growing up. I mean, even my old video, where is it? Reasons not to have kids from 2014. I didn't even comprehend that fact. So there's that. I mean, it's true. Having a baby is a life-changing and permanent thing. This then leads me on to the next conundrum, which is career. I mean, if I have kids, does that impact my career? Do I have a career? I don't think I have a career. I think there was a period whereby, yes, I did. So my social media influencing career was doing pretty well. And being a mental health advocate was not a career, but it was definitely a huge part of my life. I miss it. <laughs> I really do. I miss the positive aspects, like making change, um, but at the expense of my own life. <laughs> I left film school in 2014 and I did not attain a job at the time because my YouTube was so extensive, it was great. <laughs> and other reasons as well, so it, it, it's so, so complicated. There's too many things to summarise. And I know in the last two years I've been trying desperately to find opportunities that are even at the bottom of ladders I wish to climb, and it's impossible. I mean there's several things I am desperate to do right now and I'm, I'm trying to work towards them. <laughs> I'd love to do audiobooks. I mean, I'm having trouble with my tonsils, so that's sort of... <laughs> I'd love to design book covers. I'd love to be an illustrator. So I'm working towards the iPad, the iP you know, uh, procreate. And I'm trying to... I'm just... yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I would love to work in publishing and... <sighs> I love books. I love secondhand living and sustainability and I mean even now I'm on the cusp of starting a job related to that field but like I have a huge passion there and I just don't know how to incorporate it or use it to catapult me elsewhere and it's frightening because I feel like I'm stuck and yet I can see looking at my CV I've moved forwards but I, d I do feel stuck. I've already been applying for so much I don't really feel like I can do any more. That's why I feel like there's no conclusion to this, because I'm already trying beyond my capabilities and I'm not getting anywhere. Progressing slightly forward as to other problems that I feel are hindering me, I think confidence has definitely been a massive problem. Confidence, self-esteem, low self-esteem, anxiety. I mean, it got to a point where I personally felt like I would prefer to go hungry and go into the red than to apply for jobs or even look at jobs because I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel I could do it. Which sounds so stupid saying it out loud. Um, but it does, you get to that level whereby you're just so restricted by your own brain. 
I mean, a cover letter is bigging yourself up and when you don't have that confidence, when you're not able to see the good in yourself, you don't write good cover letters or you don't write them at all. So I know part of my lack of progress has been my own fault because I've not been able to push. It's odd. I know. I know how I. I know how I sound. I can be hit and miss. Sometimes I can be super confident, and other times I can be such a nervous wreck that I. I can't talk. I mean, I've been worse in my lifetime, but the last two years or so, sometimes it takes me five attempts to leave the house because I'm so anxious. So going to an interview feels like the end of the world. Being criticised or analysed, particularly one on one or one on five, as I've had. Um, it's, it's excruciatingly painful and it's something that we all have to go through but when you're not not able to process that I mean I think I am a creative person I have a backlog to demonstrate that across 15 years I would like to think that my past content can prove that there's a spark in here somewhere it's just difficult for me to find that spark it's so hard to see how my content has not deteriorated, but it's it's definitely lost its About 2016, took a dive. I mean, there's one massive reason for that. I was introduced to a hate forum uh, and overnight it was like a hundred people stepped into my bedroom and remained there rent free for the next four years telling me that my life was not worth living. And that, like, every single thing I did was scrutinised to the point where I stopped really doing anything because I was so frightened. And even now, even now I've distanced myself from that and I can't even engage with it. I can't even see it. Um, <laughs> they're still living rent-free in my brain. I mean, something someone wrote about me about three years ago was the tipping point for me. They said, basically, that my failure of a life is what spurs them to do better. I forget the wording, I've got it written down. And that hurt me deeper than anything I think anyone's ever said to me. When people spend years of their lives going after you and making you feel so low for doing the things that you love, it takes the joy away. And I have yet to capture that joy back. I mean, I am terrified of my camera. I don't think it's my camera per se, I think it's more where it goes. So I can sit and talk here till the end of time. Um, and it could just be me and my camera. But it may eventually become something else. I also am aware that some of my most creative periods were during horrendous periods of my life. And lots of people relate to this in that their pain stimulates their creativity. Uh, and it's not that we want to be in pain or that we go out of our way to create pain in order to feel inspired or use that pain to, I don't know. Um, but pain is the catalyst. I mean, saying that in recent years, I've stopped being creative at all times, regardless of whether I'm happy or sad. Um, like this afternoon I spent five hours on the sofa rather than painting because I literally couldn't get up. I did not feel inspired to do anything but just sit on the sofa. Whereas my 17 year old self would have written about 10,000 words at the computer or painted um, or done a clone photo. See what I mean? I'm not my 17 year old self. My overall point for this section of this video is that I am not as creative or I can't tap into that creativity, um, or my self-esteem is so low within my own self that I can't even access that part of my soul. I mean, this goes for so many things I've said in this video and more, but it gets to the point where I'm so frightened of failing that I don't even try, or my body prevents me from even considering the thought of trying. I mean, that's a massive summary. It, it goes back to when I was a kid though. If I couldn't get, the top mark in an exam, I was a failure. And that's not from my parents, it's my own own self that's done that. When I was in secondary school, if I didn't get 40 out of 40 in a science test, I considered myself a failure. If I was in college and I got less than 
on my art portfolios, then I considered myself a failure. That part of my soul flew into university and then when I got to film school, within three months of being at film school I knew I was in the wrong place. I remember being angry when I was given an estimated grade of a 2-1. I, d I won't deny that. <laughs> but by the time I was finally given my first, it didn't matter to me anymore. I was trying to distance myself from education as, as quickly and as harshly as possible. I got a first at the end of my education at the expense of my physical and mental health. I just put so much pressure on myself. So if I feel like failure is on the horizon, I shut down. Failure is not an option. So in regards to jobs and trying to better my future, I am so frightened and so full of failure. And failure is surrounding me, even when I try, that it's just making it even harder to try and move forwards. Rejection is a part of life, but the amount of rejection I receive just makes things 10 times worse. It's like I just need a whole bunch of yeses in a short period of time to go, oh my goodness, failure doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not a constant rather than just rejection, failure, rejection, failure. And I also need a holiday. I know how that sounds, but I have not had a shutdown in years. Don't get me wrong, I've been away to so many places across the world, but for work. And work brings tremendous anxiety. When you go somewhere for work, it's, it's not a holiday. I know people, people may perceive that differently, but when you're spending the whole flight shaking in worry, rather than, oh, I'm going somewhere lovely. It's just, no, no. I mean, normally if you go on holiday abroad and you get on a plane, you're either ridden with anxiety because you're scared of flying or you're excited because you're going away. Whereas me, I'm sitting there the whole time with a notebook, analyzing my notes over and over and over, shaking with anxiety, tearing my hair out, panicking that I'm gonna let everybody down. Um, and then on the way back, it's the same, but in reverse. I feel like I've let everybody down. I'm ridden with anxiety because I feel like I've done a bad job. You know, it's not a holiday. So yeah, I need a break, but I can't afford a break. Career-wise, I can't take a break. So the, I think the whole topic of this video was why I feel like my life is not progressing and why I feel stuck. What can I do to improve this? Well, I don't have funds. So it's not like I can suddenly take a six month break and go studying or go traveling across the world. I need to pay my bills and I'm struggling to do that. So for me this year, there are three things I would love. I mean, I would love to go back to school to study various things, publishing, marketing, illustration. It's not gonna happen, might not ever happen, but I would love to be accepted for one or multiple internships or apprenticeships whereby I could learn, I could build myself up from the ground again. I'm desperate. I just, I need more experience. Two, whether or not this is related to point one, I would love to <laughs> um, build up my art this year. If I can't afford to study and if I can't attain any experience anywhere, I've got to do it myself with what I have. That's what you have to do across life. You have to do what you can with what you have. Um, and three, <laughs> Work on health to the best of my ability, but work on anxiety in particular. Points one and two, I mean, as this video will outline, much of my anxiety could be solved by certain things in my life improving, but things won't improve in my life because of anxiety and because of the society we live in and also, yes. I need to sort of rebuild the confidence that I am lacking. I, I need to keep reiterating to myself that I'm not a failure and that even though I don't feel like I've made progress, I evidently have in certain areas of my life. I mean, I have to just keep trying, do the best that I can within the life that I'm living with what I have. <laughs> Sounds so cliche. I'm not saying all of this because I want attention. If anything, I don't want attention because I'm not happy with my life right now. I actually do want people to look the other way and leave me alone until I'm in a good place so that I can then showcase, but yeah. I also know that I'm not alone and that there's so many people that are in exactly the same situation as me and struggling. I'm also quite privileged in that I have my own home that I'm holding onto by the skin of my teeth, but I have my own home. That does not invalidate the negatives within my life and the things I'm upset about, but I won't deny this. <laughs> 
you know, one day I want to look back at this period and go, ah, ah, you silly thing. In the same way that I look back at my 17 year old self. I feel like she was stupid. More naive than stupid. She was not stupid, she was right to feel as she, she did within the life she was living, but I have so much more experience. <sighs> I hate hindsight. <laughs> but yeah, my 37 year old self. Um, I wanted to look back and go, oh, Rebecca. So yeah, this is an insight into my brain. Posting this video, even in its edited form, opens me up and I am frightened about that. But my brain hurts. It actually hurts. I didn't say the date. Today is the 22nd of February, 2020. 220220. I'm gonna stop there. No more, no more. I've been talking far too long. There is no conclusion, really. Let's just turn off the computer and walk away.